Good evening, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting of March 19th, 2013. We have a varied uh, agenda this evening, but the first agenda item is to finalize a, a ballot question for the upcoming May 2013 elections. And specifically, <clears throat> this has to do with uh, Park and Rec Commissioners. And they had requested the Board of Selectmen to draft a ballot question for the upcoming May election that had to do with the construction of new athletic fields at Carroll Park. The ballot question as written is non-binding for two specific reasons. One, the time constraints involved did not allow the process required to develop a binding question. And number two, more importantly, because this is the Board of Selectmen ballot question, by statute, it has to be non-binding. We cannot uh, um, advance and approve a binding ballot question. Now, that being said, I will read the proposed ballot question. Uh, question number, I do not know the number, but this question is non-binding. Shall the Dover Park and Recreation Commission be advised to construct athletic fields at Carroll Park, provided such construction is funded only with donated monies and requires no funding from taxes or from the Park and Recreation Revolving Fund. End of question. Now, I will open it up to comments and questions. Carol? Uh, I should say we have Park and Rec Commissioners right here, Rich Oasis, who's chair, Scott Seidman, Nancy Sims. Yes, Scott, you have a question? So in your opening statement, you, you used the word new athletic fields, but yet in the Is that question, it? Okay, yes, I'm, I stand corrected on that one. Thank you. Uh, I'll go by what the ballot question says. Thank you, Scott. No. So I guess my question is, th it's, it's this way, it's not new construction? Um, the ballot question I just read is what the, if we approve it this evening, is what will be on the ballot in May. Except that we will add S's after both uh, park. Uh -huh to make it Parks and Recreation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's actually singular. In the bylaw. In the bylaw, it's Park and Recreation? Park and Recreation Commissioners. And the name of the fund actually is that also. <laughs> okay. Um, I, so I guess before we go to uh, questions and comments, um, Rich, did you want to say something? Or one of the commissioners want to say something? Well, I guess we had a question. Would it be possible to add new athletic fields at Carroll Park? Okay, that's a question. I don't know the answer to that just yet. Do you have any other questions or comments? Okay, I'll open the uh, questions and comments to Joe and Carol, please. So, so I'd like to follow up on that. I, you know, one of, the, one of the, the questions that we've received, um, I'm sure we've all received phone calls and emails from citizens, as you two probably have as well, you three have that. Um, does this question, as written, prevent Park and Rec from doing anything with its athletic fields at Carroll Park. And is that why you want to add new? Yes, correct. Versus renovating fields that you have, for instance? Correct, exactly. Where would you like to, uh, so I'm sorry. So, so it would be, okay, would they, be advised to construct new yeah. athletic fields, okay, right? right there. Yes. Okay. So let's, let's just pursue the definition of that. So let's say we added the new. Then this would be interpreted to not prevent you from changing any existing field to artificial turf, for instance. That would be correct. Right. So whatever the footprint currently is of the fields that exist, you could do with what you wish. Is that? That would be correct, yes. And is that the way we all view yes, adding so effort? I, yeah, I, I, I see that. Okay. If I may, Mr. Chairman, just yes, please. A point uh, of clarity. Just can that be done? Yes. Certainly, it's you, you can you can revise the ballot question. Okay. I don't know whether the Park and Rec Commission had previously voted as a board 
in one of its meetings to approve specific language or not. But the other question I had for clarity, would additional instead of new be a better word to use? Uh, let's go back to the park and rec on that. Have you voted in a previous meeting? I know you've seen this particular ballot question and you voted originally um, on it. Um, have you taken any other action before this evening to change the wording on this? Okay. Um, that being said, Dave, can they still come before us to this evening and, and 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 ask for something and then go back and make a proact uh, um, retroactive vote? I th I think they could. Okay. Okay, so I, I do like um, Dave's suggestion on additional or new, so well, we really have to clear that up this evening before we leave, obviously. All right. Now, that being said, <coughs> um, Carol, do you have further questions before we ask the big question? I go, I, I, my, I'm still on jet lag, so I need my mind to sort of <laughs> work on this a little bit, so go ahead. I'm a little slow tonight. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I know uh, I've sat in your meetings, and I know I have presented uh, the question to you guys as a whole. Will you be bound by the results of this ballot question? And Nancy, you were kind enough last night to speak at the Open Hearing and the Warrant Committee, and you said it, but um, are you speaking, or, and I'll ask Mr. Oasis, who's chairman, are you speaking on behalf of the whole committee? And you have taken a vote at your meeting, and it was unanimous. It was. And you'll be bound by the non binding ballot question. We will. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Joe. In, on the state statute, is there a minimum number of days that the finalized wording has to be in place before the election? That's a good question for Mr. Ramsey. There is a deadline for presenting the ballot questions. April 1st. April 1st. To be 1st. A town clerk. Okay. Okay. The deadline is but set since this is our year. last scheduled meeting prior to April first, I wanted to clear that up. No, actually, evening. no, we have it's one next week. I believe. I should really look at a calendar now. Okay. Okay. No, it's just a little thing unusual. It really was. Thank you. <laughs> ah, okay. So, well, it, it, so, uh, I'm just trying to do the decision tree here to tend to, to, you know. So. By adding in additional, it still allows you to manage the existing footprint of fields in any way you wish. Right. And it allows us to address the needs of our constituents using whatever funds you wish. Correct. So just um, in, in anticipation of reaction to, to this. So if your plan B or C or D or whatever <laughs> was to uh, put artificial turf in and redesign the footprint of the fields um, closest to the street there. The currently cleared town park pieces? Yeah, you know, the, uh, the bug field and that, that area. So if you were to redesign that, or, um, and put in artificial turf, then this this question has nothing to do with that. You would not be bound by. Right. As revised, not as it sits. As revised. As revised. As original, it would, because it involves construction. Construction. Or being or defined as construction or reconstruction or renovation or any activity on. I would define construction very broadly. Yeah, and that would be a great question for two lawyers to set up and spend a lot of money to figure out. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would suggest that we add some verbiage to this to clear it up. But in any so case, they, this has to be done by next uh, next meeting next week. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. But as a citizen of Dover going to vote on being clear as to what they're voting on, yeah. On May 20th. Um, I think we have some work to do on the wording. Unless, unless we provide 
like they often do on, on the state ballot? You know, the discussion of the ballot question? Can't. We can't? We can't. No. Bye. I mean, to be honest with you, it presents, I mean, aside from the reason behind us wanting to put um, additional fields there, if we were, for instance, to want to change the bug field to a softball field, and that would involve constructing a new dugout, a new pitching mound, this would preclude that from happening. So it's important for us. I understand. But if we can't provide an if we cannot provide an explanation in the on the ballot itself, then we need to make sure that the wording very distinctly yes, makes sir. it clear what A question for all of you, if I might, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Rich. Um, how long would this be in effect for? In other words, 10 years from now, would it preclude whatever the question is, if we agree as a commission that this is binding forever and ever? I would think until the very last opponent of this project dies off, it'll be binding. <laughs> and I hate to say it that way, but I, I, this will be around for a while. Okay. I don't know if there's a technicality involved there, Dave. Uh, well, it's, it's legally speaking non-binding. Yeah. So we don't have ah. the kind of concerns that we have with the citizens' petition, potentially. This is, a, this is really a matter of intent uh, that the Park and Rec Commission is, is agreeing to be bound by. So it's... It's only the present Park and Rec Commissioners that's making the binding promise. Well, then, 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 this, then this doesn't come close to addressing the intent. If that's the case, then then this becomes almost meaningless. If all this does is say that the current five commissioners are bound by this for the two weeks before the com commission changes because of an election. <laughs> well, you could interpret in, uh, in additional two ways. One, that as long as one of the existing five commissioners is on the commission, that it's, they're bound by it. Or that the existing five commissioners are binding the legal commission entity regardless of the members that are on that commission. So I guess where I was coming from is if in fact you would like and think this should be binding, Carol, until any of the neighbors, unfortunately, would until the last one is gone, I think that would be important to the townspeople to know that by voting for this, we could put then I don't know, 70 years, 80 years, that there will be no, whatever time. No, I, well, I understand. But we had to put this in the context of the only reason why we're in this mess in the first place, having to wordsmith this thing. Yeah. OK, and then we have the citizen's petition, OK, which in a way is philosophically related to this question. Sure. Right? So we need to we need to address we need to word the question in a way that addresses the concerns of a good number of citizens of Dover. Would right. it be a prudent use of the um, board's time for us to defer this discussion to your next meeting and we can work on something um, without taking up your time? Um, I appreciate that question, but I would like to continue the discussion so everyone's on the same ballpark on on the issues. And um, what I wasn't just happy to hear is the comment on, so it's only this binding, morally binding <coughs> decision that is just pertained to the five existing commissioners. That, that's very tough to hear. Yeah, no I think it's a question as to whether, I don't think any of us, no, I, you know, perception aside, that I'm sure no one's going to be happy to hear that, and that'll stick in everyone's mind. I don't think that there's a moral issue here. I think the three of us were coming at it from a legal perspective. Yeah, no. It, I think all five of us are of the impression that it's something that will, I mean, it, it's not a personal it's No, I use the word morally uh, uh, binding for lack of a better uh, uh, term. Because it is a non-binding ballot question, but you guys are going to be bound by it to your own personal standards, quite honestly. And our moral obligation? Absolutely. Okay, that's all I meant. Right. Oh, well, absolutely. perhaps what we should do is when, when this thing gets reworded, which obviously it's yeah, going to yeah. be, that we specifically say that this 
that um, you know whether it's shall the current shall the, the current and future Dover Park and Rec Commission you know something that extends it out and makes it the commission as a government entity versus the individuals versus the commissioners. Right. How about if there was a time limit on it? Yeah, I was just going to ask. I mean, rather than putting it on the commissioners or the commissioners forever and ever, we could agree as a commission for a period of time not to do this. Um, but that would still probably... What kind, what kind of thing were you thinking of? Um, somewhere between our term limits and when the last neighbor would die. I, I said it facetiously. He but said it facetiously <laughs> because I, I don't think because the but 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 um, I'm surprised no none of the abutters and, and those folks are here tonight. Though I know some of them are probably watching us on, on cable, so I'm really surprised that they didn't show up to this. But they will say my property value was impacted by the potential of developing the area as, as your C Park plan is. So, positively or negatively? Negatively. One could argue positively. I understand that, but I'm, you know, this is what they're going to say. We heard last night that litigation is, is to totally viable and everything else. Um, so that's what they're going to say, and they're going to say, therefore, even if the last one were to die and the estate were to go to sell the property, the value, right, the value of the, of the property is going to be less because of the open end. So you get into that. So. You're being facetious, and that's appropriate. <laughs> Let's not continue on that because it, it's a serious issue as to the, as to the time frame of it. I mean, I, I don't believe that the, that the folks that have um, um, put together the citizens' petition, which has a huge negative impact on the town, okay, um, or the folks that might be um, assuaged by by some kind of ballot question that's that's binding, okay, are looking at okay, I don't have to worry about it for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. But on the other hand, I don't think it's fair to the Park and Rec Department, the Park and Rec Commission, and all of the uh, families and athletes and players that we are serving to subjugate their interests and their safety um, because of the semantics of the question. Well, you wouldn't be subjugating their interests and safety if you had if you had agreed to go to town meeting, regardless of where your funding was from. For to ask a, a question at town meeting? In the future, if you were to say right now that the Park and Rec Commission, okay, for all intents and purposes, eternity, mm -hmm. okay, would basically go to town meeting and ask for funds. And ask for funds. See, then the then we wouldn't have the citizens petition and we wouldn't right. be sitting here tonight. You're right. We've had this discussion for five or six years. Right. The problem there is that it then requires Dover citizens to pay for fields that Sherburn residents will benefit from without having to spend a dime. And that was the primary goal for our raising money Privately to begin with, despite that's the disingenuous. That's disingenuous, Nancy. Because the fact despite that the fact that you raise money there. doesn't mean you can't go to town meeting. You can still go to town meeting and ask for a thousand bucks because Perfect. four million dollars are being raised fund. But at least you get the town to decide whether they want to do it. You're right. I stand okay. corrected. That's an option. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, should Common Council be uh, come up with some ideas? Uh, town Council, David, correct me if I'm wrong, has approved uh, this already. And if it's final language as written. Now, additional ideas, I don't know to that, though. I mean, he took a, a stab at this based on a, a general sense of context. Right. Um, any of these types of questions here, he, he, he couldn't add any value to the intent mm -hmm. of the parties here. They would have to make those intentions clear. Well, before we meet next, because obviously we're not going to come to the determination on this particular matter this evening, um, we're going to get our, have to get our hands around how future Park and Rec Commissioners can be bound by this. And 
if there's a time frame involved, I don't know if you can do that. Um, I, I, I don't know. Carol, what are you thinking of as an appropriate time period? I don't know. I, I, I really, I don't know. Um, I just know that this, the fact that we're sitting here tonight looking at this wording and we have four or five major issues says that this wording is not going to work and, and full intent of purchase isn't even worth voting on because no one would know what they're voting on. So I think we all have, together, have a lot of work to do between now and uh, our next meeting to put together some words that, that obviously are going to have to ex be expanded as well. If sure. we can't do a write-up explanation, then, then the explanation almost has to be within the wording of the, of the bar. I would say that um, the agreement that, was, that is currently in place up at the high school for the lights there continues to um, restrict their growth and what they are doing. Um, that agreement, I'm sorry, I remember the exact year, but 2003. 2003 limits the number of nights that lights can be used at the high school. And For you, eternity? Um, until the neighbor who made the agreement moves out of town. And they moved. Who is that agreement between? It's the region. The and the region. The region and the, that particular uh, neighbor? Dover, uh, planning, 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 planning board. board. Um, I, have, I have all the documents. Do you really? I, I probably like to, I think I'd like to look at those. So, um, so that's honored by the region, so to speak, until this person moved out and moved out, but they continue that. So it's honored, so honor is a key word and how you get that into a ballot question, I don't know. That, as you're saying, so that wasn't even a ballot question, it was just a agreement. Oh, I thought I heard non binding somewhere, I'm sorry. It was a, it was just a promise. It was just a promise. Real promise. Yeah. yeah. And it's, they're still doing it, and it was long ago. Well, I hope you can appreciate uh, the feedback that we get on, on the opponents of this particular uh, project um, uh, distrusting, uh, um, for lack of a better word. So, um, yeah, I think that if we come together and really button this up and make it as solid as possible, it's in everyone's best interest, then they can feel confident, and then we can feel confident in approving it, and, and you guys can. Uh, feel comforting moving ahead or whatever the case may be once this ballot question is answered. I agree. So I, I was really hoping that um, because of the, um, the very dangerous impact of the citizen's petition as written uh, relative to all town property, um, that, that this ballot question, when developed sufficiently, would uh, mitigate a lot of those concerns and would help um, to defeat the citizen's petition because folks would know that they would have basically a binding commitment with a question that addresses the project. You know what I mean? Right. So mm -hmm. there's a relationship there. Mm -hmm. This doesn't do that yet. The, um, you know, voting devil's advocate, it, us coming here and saying the parking right voting that we would be Bind, binded by this decision. If we were sitting here and saying we don't care what the answer is, we're not gonna we're not gonna promise to do it. Neither has any weight because it's a non-binding question. Well, legally, if right? I may, that goes to my point of a moral obligation right. to your fellow towns uh, a person. That's why I use that term. Right. So because legally you're right is, not to do anything. Why would, they, why, why would they think that the Park and Rec, this board or any other board, would do something that the town doesn't want? Uh, I can't answer that for everyone. Everyone has certain opinions on this particular project. I think that if the vote comes out that the majority of the voters want the project, then as the owners of the property and the uh, sponsors of the project, it would be disingenuous of us to side with the minority and not go forward with the project. And if it is the minority that doesn't want the project, then it's putting too many gray hairs in our heads for us to um, push forward with the project that the majority of the town doesn't want. 
Oh, really? Look at Scotty, man. It's all lazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's falling out. <laughs> 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 I agree with you. In fact, I I'm, uh, almost look at this ballot question as a public opinion poll, and the result of it will dictate what you guys do next. I think that's I. But I that's the whole fair. thing is, once you guys turn over, it's, it's say the town overwhelmingly rejects it, and there's turnover, which happens. These are volunteer positions. I understand that. Uh, it happens. Is the next group going to have the same inclination to uh, um, somewhat abide by this non-binding vote. So that's a key issue this evening. So, but I guess looking at that question, and again, you know where all of us come from on this, but in five years, the population in Dover doubles, and there are more people, more children, more adults playing sports than there are today, and they're playing more in different sports than they are today, and we need more additional fields than we have today to preclude park and recreation from establishing or developing new fields at Carroll Park five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, I, I think it's really dangerous and scary. At that point, to Carroll's point, exactly. you go to town meeting and ask for a thousand bucks. If you had agreed to go to town meeting in the first place, we wouldn't be sitting here tonight. You just made the case for a process that has worked in Dover for decades and decades and didn't work on this one, which is that when you want to do something significant in town, you go to town meeting. Because five years from now, okay, if you had, if, if the process was you go to town meeting, to my point to Nancy before, even if it's, I've raised the money privately, so I'll go to town meeting and ask for a thousand bucks just to go to town meeting and get the will of the town. That's how we do it in Dover. You get the will of the town, and you do it by town meeting. By avoiding town meeting, you created this issue. So if you go to town meeting and you do that for $1,000, and it gets voted down, what precludes you from going back the next year and asking for $1,000? Nothing. That's the way it works. So then and it happens all the time in Dover. How many times have we had to go back to get major expenditures done in this town? So it's my, a process. So my point is, why should this ballot be different then? Because it's a ballot, it's not town meeting. But, but we're still enabling... And it's not binding. Town meeting is binding. For what period of time? A year? So depends, depends how the it it's depends either. how it's worded, but, but which it's is exactly what we're getting to here, so how it's worded. But, but if people are trying to raise money for a new school and it fails, the next year it can reappear on the ballot. Absolutely. So there's nothing that says you agree to be bound by this decision, Dover, forever and ever. So if we vote down new schools, you're not going to get them. But to get your schools, you always have to go back to town meeting. Mr. Chairman, in all respect, in 1976, there was a plan put forth to build these playfields and chicken playfields. It was voted to town meeting unanimously. By, well, actually, it was by, by, by eight votes. It was done, ready to go. The day after school let out, they reconvened town meeting. And the people in town who were against the project went to town meeting in numbers and voted against it. So it was gone. So what's the point that way? You voted in once, then you went back to town meeting again and voted it out. So who, who's being bound by who? I don't understand that. Um, I'm a little lost on the example. I know some of the, uh, the example you're talking about. Well, Carol said, but go to town meeting and prove something. Well, we did. We went to town meeting, and then people uh, agreed to pay for the construction of those play in 1976. And then within, within almost a month and a half, petitions by citizens reconvened town meeting, and they voted it out after There was a special town meeting yeah. after the fact? Yes, it was, right. Yeah. Okay. I'm not well, privy to this. I'm not either. That was before I was here, certainly. But, um, but you know what? That's the process in Dover. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a messy process. And that's probably an example of a messy process. It's, a, it's, it's an example of why the town moderator already says to folks in the beginning of, of the town meeting, do not leave because you know within a half an hour of a, of a warrant article, it could be requested for a revote. It's the same thing. But that's the process. That's how Dover is governed. And we sort of have, we work with the process that we have. And the process is town meeting. Yeah. And the frustration is duly noted. Um, because I mean, it's frustrating is for you in that example. It's a great example. Uh, um, 
you know, we're dealt with the hands too that are very frustrated. We have to go through the processes, but we have to go through the processes to get to uh, an end game. But it's duly noted how frustrating this, some of this can be. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Joe. Other than the school issue at a town meeting, the town is lucky to get 300 voting people in a town meeting. Town elections, you get 200 people out of 4,000. Uh, say that's right. Yeah. Two hundred people are going to decide what the town wants because other people don't want to come, don't bother. You know, and that that is an absolute shame. But, okay. but at the same time, okay, folks that live in Dover know that this is the way we're governed, right. and they can make the decision whether they want to spend three hours a year on the first Monday of May every single year to make themselves known, and if they don't, the next day decision. We can only do what the pro democratic process allows. The democratic process says every citizen of Dover has the right to spend three to four hours once a year to mm -hmm. vote on issues before the town. If they choose not to do that, that's their decision. They don't have mandatory voting. Okay. I think the day-long election day is logistically significantly easier for parents with children, to income parents. Having been there, done that, I know you say it's three hours a day, a year, one day, but it's, I know, I know. it's, you're going to get more people, the opinions of a broad, broad cross-section of the town at an election day question than you are a town meeting day question. Okay. Well, this has been a very healthy debate, certainly. Um, let's get our hands on um, what this ballot question should include, and our next meeting is March 28th, is that correct? It is. Um, so we'll take it up again on March 28th. Thank you. Do you have any final comments before? Uh, I, I, I do have a, oh, a couple yes. of questions, if I may. Um, so are you going to um, convene a meeting and talk about this and get something to us before the 28th? Yes. yes. Okay. When is your next scheduled meeting? Next okay. meeting is April 5th. A special meeting for um, this Friday. Okay. Uh, okay. So you will start a special meeting. Thank you for that. Okay. To get us something in that. Okay. And, yeah. and, and just a, a, a sort of a, a, an unrelated question to the specific wording at hand, at hand is that um, I know that you have um, a planning board meeting that's been continued to sometime in early April. Um, and that there was some traffic study stuff and some wetland stuff that come up in the previous meetings. Are you proceeding with that, that kind of activity or have you sort of put everything on hold waiting for the town election? Um, we're proceeding. So the, the key piece for us is the wetland survey, which needs to be presented to the Conservation Commission. And with the snow cover, it's been a little bit tough. And we received an email today from conservation asking us if we could wait until April 24th. So as of today, our plan is probably to present to them the wetland survey on the 24th of April. And we will then schedule for the planning board sometime around then um, to go through the traffic. I mean, we're trying to do the two sort of side by side. Obviously, for the planning board, they need to know what the, the final layout is going to be and the final design, which is somewhat dependent on how things go with conservation. So why, why would you, I assume that the wetland is going to cost some money? Yes. So, and the traffic as well? Correct. So why would you spend that money before you know, if, you're, if you say that you're going to be bound by that, a town election, why not wait and see what the town says? because for the last three years, our clubs have gone outside of Dover. This year we had a soccer club rented, external fields, girls lacrosse had their tryouts a couple weeks ago in Bedford. Um, we're losing our constituents, we're losing our business because we What's don't have- What's that got to do with waiting six weeks to spend more money? Because we need to keep this process moving if we wait until the end of the election in May and then do the wetlands survey and then present the CONCOM we're another few months behind. But so. how much is, are we talking 
two or three thousand dollars or ten or twenty thousand dollars? Well, I think that it's important to say that we're doing the, concert, the um, wetlands consultant work first. We're doing the traffic work second. And we're taking it very conservatively, step by step. How much um, is the wetlands consultant costing? Uh, just approved a fee not to exceed thirteen thousand five hundred at our last meeting. For the wetlands, it was six thousand. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. For the wetlands survey, it was six thousand dollars, not to exceed. And the rationale behind moving forward, and we did talk at our meeting about the delaying it until after the um, May twentieth uh, election, was that if we need to make improvements to the existing fields that we have, the, either the two soft uh, baseball fields um, or the soft baseball field that's near the tennis courts or the rectangular fields between the two baseball fields or the top lot even, that it would be helpful to have um, a extremely professional uh, wetland survey done. So do you have a plan? So, because there's a time limit on the, on the validity of a wetlands plan. I, I think believe it's three, three years. Yeah. You can extend it for um, one year increments up okay, to three so times. So it's up to six years. Okay. Six years. Okay, thanks. And, and the money for this, for the wetland study, has been set aside previously. It's not as if we've been raising money for this. So I think on the website you had, uh, the planning board had you on April 8th. Has that been postponed also? Um, I don't know that it has yet because we just got the ConCom email today asking us to, to be put off. So Okay. If you guys would please just follow up on that one. So. A lot of people follow this. Okay. Um, any other comments, Carol? Nothing, Joe? Any other comments? Would you like any make any comments before uh, you guys go off into the night? I have one comment, a general comment, and um, I've made this comment in past years, and it's not particular to parks and recreation, but it's particular to um, the reputation of the town of Dover. And I grew up in Vermont where town meetings were the norm. So it's something I'm familiar with and I cherish it. I think it's a wonderful way to run um, the government of the town. I have been distressed in the last 12 months with some of the personality, character, some of the venom, I guess, that I've seen in public meetings. Um, some of it's been addressed to me personally. Some of it's been addressed to the commission. And it's not so much that I'm, I'm not objecting to the attacks on me as a person. But I asked the selectmen, I asked the warrant committee, I asked the uh, capital budget committee to try and convey the importance of um, behaving civilly to and with each other. And it's been distressing to me to have my fellow Dover citizens um, be less than polite and cordial to each other. I hear you love and play against I share that concern greatly. I, 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 would, I would add that there's a meeting going on right now downstairs of the Rail Truck Committee, and we as committee members have been called liars publicly and so forth and so on, so I get it, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll... Get that all wrapped up prior to March 28th. But it, at least it was a um, good discussion on um, how open this particular ballot question is. Uh, the well, next, I, I'm, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I, just, no. I was going to say, I know that Park and Rec sort of has the lead to put together some, some words and address all this, um, given the short time frame and, and the. And the and now the requirement that we come to an agreement at one one meeting more, mm -hmm. that we as, as three selectmen also might want to put a pen to paper and, and sort of try to come up with our own wording as well, just so that we can see how the di different options t to define these, these issues that we have. And one of the options we should consider is not to put a ballot question on that's not binding and wait the year. But that's an option. Yeah. 
I don't think that will please anybody that that's an option. Okay, next agenda item is to assign fiscal 13 annual town meeting articles and review the article motions. No. Give, uh, give me up the speed on this. Are we just um, assigning the special warrant articles or what are we doing? Uh, Customarily, the board assigns the warrant articles to individual members. Right. We've done that the last time, no? No, we just uh, ordered them. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, then I'll go right through them as quickly as possible, or slowly as possible. Uh, the article number one, which is uh, to hear and act on the committee reports from the 2012 annual report. And not everyone jump on. And <laughs> now, are we signing? Do we, do we normally sign those? I don't think you well, do. Well, that's why I said special articles are just. Forgive me, Mr. Chairman. I think we, we go to the substantive articles yes. to sign those. Okay, so I, I, I've said uh, special articles. Good, so I'll jump down. So quickly we run through this one. Uh, so we don't have to four and five obviously uh, Excuse cover. Me, are, are we approving the are we looking at are we going to look at the articles separately you're going to look at the motion separately the, motion separately. the, okay. the, the so right rough draft okay. Yep. okay thank you okay we'll okay. assign okay. first okay. Um, so we'll start with um, uh, 11 planning board or Right, because 10, 10 is being withdrawn, 10 right? 10 will be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the 11, the planning board, and they want to amend part of the bylaw to add one associate member to their board. Um, okay. And uh, if no one else puts their hand up, I, I, I'll take that. Okay, number 12, citizen's petition, uh, which would require a bylaw change requiring town meeting approval for any substantial changes to town-owned property, regardless of funding sources. Oh, I think you jumped into that list. <laughs> <laughs> My feet are still wet. <laughs> you know, I actually want to do a better job than what I did at the open hearing last night, so I definitely will take that. Thank you. Uh, DS Regional School borrowing for the installation of the HVAC system at the middle school. Um, I, you know, I, um, well, let me put it this way. I'd like to do 17 and 18, obviously okay. 17 because I'm on the rail trail committee and, and I'm the so. Okay. So Joe will take 13, okay. which is the HVAC. Thank you, Joe. Um, uh, number uh, 14 will be dismissed, which is the uh, a, a, um, the intermunicipal agreement, if in fact that had come to fruition for the HVAC system. So that will be dismissed, 14. Uh, 15 is the DS Regional School borrowings to pay costs, and I believe, and don't hold me this, $122,000, which was at the open hearing last evening. Um, so, Joe, would you like that one also? Yeah. Thank you. Um, for, uh, 16 will be dismissed, which again is the intergovernmental inter agreement, which would have paid for the items I just spoke of, but they're going to bond them, or that, that is their intention if get, they get approved. Okay, 17 and 18. 17 is the rail trail feasibility, Carol. Uh, 18 is the medical, medical marijuana dispensary and cultivation moratorium. Um, and Carol like that and the rest of them are boilerplate um, as I read quickly 118 the state's plenary guidelines are out the 29th 29th of March March are they? I thought it was going to be May for some reason mm -hmm. but they would have sped that up that's good okay those are the pertinent um, warrant articles we have assigned those now, you want us to review each article, Dave? Uh, customarily, you review the motions. This is the first draft, so they're not complete. Okay. So take a quick look and see if there's any comments that anyone has with what is in front of them. Okay. Um, is it 
customary for me to read the motion. Well, okay, thank you. Take a few minutes and okay. we can speed along to the more pertinent ones, I imagine. So I have a question article five. Um, the numbers that are here. So the numbers that are listed on page eight and nine for the various items. Mm -hmm. Is that the number that was submitted by the sponsoring uh, department? Or is that the number that's being recommended by the Capital Budget Committee? The latter. Because the Capital Budget Committee um, has voted um, on um, 5A mm. not to recommend that. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember actually Mr. Assetti mentioned that in his comments last evening. He put a zero beside it. Yes, and um, just quickly. It looks like we voted this morning on um, 7A and 7E, but that looks like the numbers we voted on. I know so the 275 is the number we new number about. and we reduced the and the, they reduced the technology hardware so I think those are okay we'll double check that mrs. Yeah. okay None of the revolving accounts in Article 9 have changed, have they? I don't believe they no, have. No, they have not. Thank you. Article 10, as we've said, is the Council of Aging um, Feasibility Study for a standalone property will be um, dismissed. Number 11 was the Planning Board. And a bylaw change to add a uh, associate number. Thank you. So last night, I will get to Article 12 here. Um, so last night, Barbara Palmer mentioned that that they would be uh, making a motion to amend on the floor. Yeah, she mentioned one. Uh, uh, the number going from 50,000 to 150,000. I, I believe she was trying to appease me, was her comment. And uh, she was going to specify that it's only relevant to parkland. Correct. Right? Are those, is that legal? Mr. Bott and I had a conversation to that effect at 4 o'clock this afternoon, Mrs. Lisbon, but you already know that because we think the same way. And he's going to ponder the question. The preliminary indication is. Yes, because it's less restrictive than the original intent, but he wants to think about it a little, a little bit. Uh, it would normally be a very simple answer because our articles always have or take any other action relative there too, but this is a petition and, and we just take their language and we run with it. But he still thinks that probably it would be okay to make those amendments. But he will get back to me on that. And would it, hit, would it be his recommendation then that he should be suggest to him that given given Barbara's comments that 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 he that he word the amendment so that we know that we'll be legally standing when they present it on the front floor. You will prepare for that contingency. And then we'll contact Barbara and talk about that. Okay. You know, something like this, it's a shame the attorney general does, uh, hasn't and doesn't taken a proactive role in reviewing um, some of these questionable um, bylaw changes, not questionable, but ones that, uh, um, well, I guess questionable is the uh, proper term. I think they would be overwhelmed by hypotheticals. Yeah. And of course, it's worse for us because as um, Mr. Bott's legal opinion opined, this will not be a bylaw, so it won't even get retrospective review by AG's office. This is a vote of the town. 
So how would it, how would it be enacted into law then? That is one of the sticky wickets. If this thing is approved, it it really complicates things um, because it isn't a bylaw. Every time so, I read this, I get more confused. So practically speaking, I think we may brought this up when we first got this. Practically speaking, its implementation, since it's not a law and it won't be reviewed by the AG's office, any of the, um, as currently written, anything, anything probably or as park, school, cemetery, select, okay, could choose to challenge this in court. Uh, depending upon the circumstances, any board that has jurisdiction otherwise could decide to proceed irrespective of this vote. And then it would be up to somebody else to then decide to challenge it based on this. And as uh, Mr. Bott said in his opinion, this is a recipe for litigation. There are no cases, uh, so it's, 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 it's a great um, stick mischief for maker. anybody to wield. Yes, tremendous mischief maker. Okay. That was 12. 13, which is the DS region seeking borrowing authority for the HVAC uh, system. The middle school. 14, I mentioned, will be dismissed. Uh, 15 is the DS region seeking approximately $122,000 via a uh, um, debt to pay for capital improvements and equipment. 16 will be dismissed, which is regarding the same issue. It would have been paid out of free cash. Okay, 17, rail trail. I think I've heard something about this. And, uh, we have to make sure we get a quorum, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, so that'll be for uh, good debate. So the town is, uh, the real trail, or the selectman, I should say, uh, seeking $50,000 to further the study of the feasibility before the real trail committee can uh, give us an opinion on what to do. Uh, 18 is the medical marijuana treatments. And uh, for the purpose of an audience, the attorney general. Um, uh, uh, disallowed two local towns, and I think it was uh, Burlington and Wakefield, I could be wrong there, where the, in their town meetings they voted in bylaw changes prior to the rules and regulations being issued by the Commonwealth. So the Attorney General, and I paraphrase, disallowed uh, prohibition until such time of the rules and regulations are in place, but she did allow, and her staff obviously, allow moratoriums. So I believe our wording in, in our warrant article uh, allows for moratorium. So that Does it, um, to give a, a link? Oh, you answered that question yesterday. Okay, the, this board. motion actually does contemplate an expiration July 30, 2014, assuming that the regulations come out as Mr. Mellican indicated on time and zoning efforts right. uh, cooperate with that. This could be amended next year if the time needed to be elongated. But now, how come that date isn't in the article itself? Um, or am I missing that? Well, because it's, in the, it's in the motion now, right? Yeah, it's in the motion. On, yeah. The very end of 28. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I didn't see that. Good. So, in effect, it's a moratorium that the people are going to vote for. Is there a reason to do it only for a year versus two? Uh, the AG is, is less inclined to approve moratoriums the longer out they go. Okay. Uh, 19, and I believe we're into boilerplate um, mm -hmm. warrant articles going forward, reserve fund, unpaid bills, prior years, supplemental appropriations, free cash, the final free cash transfer which will be calculated at the town meeting. Mr. Cohen, I believe you have a nice big calculator with big numbers on it, so that'll work out well. 
That'll be big for me then. <laughs> Doing the figure exercise as we get ready. Good. But uh, that is our quick review of the articles and motions for the annual town meeting 2013. And I imagine we'll, we'll discuss these in, uh, further next meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next agenda item is going, we're going to discuss the Council on Aging's request for use of space at the Carroll Community Center. And this ties into the warrant article that they have asked to be dismissed. They originally had asked the um, Board of Selectmen and to have a warrant article asking for $15,000 for a feasibility study for a standalone building, new building that they wanted. Um, but come to find out that the uh, Council of Aging met in a series of meetings and voted to ask the board to use um, space, existing space at the Carroll Community Center whereby they consolidate their programs and offices into one uh, particular area. Um, Dave, do you want to follow up on this? Or Carol, do you want to follow up on this? Please. Well, in response to the request, the Board of Selectmen, I think at its last meeting, referred the matter to the CMAC for a recommendation and also asked that I would follow up with the chairman of the COA to talk about the logistical implications of this. I have a meeting with the chairman tomorrow. CMAC at its meeting last week uh, voted to recommend to the selectmen that they grant the use of the space of the so-called art room, the storage room on either end, on either side of the art room, as well as the continued use of the blue room at the Carroll Community Center, um, at the space to be let to them as is. As is, good. Yeah, with the understanding that the space utilized downstairs is coming back into inventory or how is that going to work? That isn't clear. It's one of the questions I have. I believe that's the intention, but I want to talk with the chairman about that. I believe they intend to move all of their operation across the street. And time-wise, what's the intention there? That's a, a detail that would depend upon our ability to move them and their willingness to accept the space as is. Okay. Well, I think it's a very positive move. Gives them the ability to prove their... Um, uh, um, the numbers that they've been quoting uh, to us directly as far as the number of people utilizing the uh, um, COA and its programs. Um, please, Carol. And it, and it provides them with uh, being in a building that not only do they have more space of their own, but they're now uh, abutting the gym, you know, abutting the library, so there's, there's a tremendous amount of space now within the same building envelope that's available to them should they want to expand their programming. Yeah. yeah. Good. And you know, and I, I think the as is, you know, we've spent a lot of money on, on, on redoing the art room, and I think Carl did a wonderful job on that. And um, uh, I had uh, informally uh, uh, met with uh, their subcommittee um, at their request, and um, we have a process in town for improving space when individuals need to improve space. So you know, if they move in as is and they find that there are specific needs. Then we have a budgetary process for capital budget requests. We have building maintenance bud operating budgets for non-capital dollars. And we would just work together to, to, to meet the needs as we would with the library or any other building. That's correct. Good, thank you. Joe, any comments on the COA? Mm -hmm. I think it's a right move. Yes, I concur. Okay, now, do we uh, formally have to accept this, Dave, or? We have to make a decision to let them use the space. Okay, Carol, would you like to make that motion? So I move that we designate the, um, the art room, including the three interior spaces and the two storage rooms contiguous to the art room, which obviously will now need to be renamed. <laughs> uh, for use by Council on Aging as is. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You haven't done the directory yet, have you? <laughs> um, no, we haven't. Make sure a call takes a hold on that. <laughs> uh, next on the agenda is the discuss the rail trail gift fund. And um, 
Carol, do you want to speak to that, or Dave wants to speak to that? I need to read the memo first, ah, okay. <laughs> if I may. Ah, okay. So the um, friends of the of the um, of the. Dover Recreational Path um, have been, has established itself, and there are over 100 uh, members at this point, it appears. And the, they asked a question about um, independent fundraising, which is a um, major responsibility of any Friends group, whether it's Friends of the Library, Friends of the Council of Aging, or in the case within Massachusetts, the um, a major activity of the many different Friends of Rail Trail and Recreation Paths in various towns in Massachusetts. And to do that, they would have to go through a 501c3 process, um, which is time consuming um, um, and cost some money. And um, they would be doing that um, anticipating that the feasibility study would recommend a rail trail conversion and anticipating that town meeting would, would so vote. Um, neither, neither of those um, anticipations are uh, a firm at this point, and that's why we need another year to study it. So their question was, how, without having to go through that process, how could they accept any funds um, to be used for, um, for various activities? So the question was whether they could use something within the town government to do that. And um, that's what Jerry's um, response is. Yes. I guess similar to how the cemetery was going to use the same process should people fund the uh, the water feature that the cemetery commissioners had, had been promoted, right? That's the same thing. You have a little bit more detail in it than theirs does, but yes. yep. same idea. And at some point in time, I assume that that could then con be uh, converted over or given back to a, a formal Friends 501c3. I believe so, yes. Should they establish it and we go ahead. So, um, just look at the second paragraph here. If the board wishes to set up a gift fund, the best course would be to take a vote to that effect and set out the specific terms of the fund that they are seeking to. Okay. Well, I guess I would like to suggest, given that we just got this memo, at least I just got this memo, that um, we um, we work on this and, and perhaps address it at our March 28th meeting. Great. Since we have to put together some wording mm -hmm. and specifics. Yep. And Dave, maybe you and I can get together and talk about that. Certainly. Okay. Okay. On to the next agenda item, which is the execute the special state primary warrant. On Tuesday, April 13th. The uh, special state primaries um, for um, Senator and Congress for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We will have one precinct, and the voting will be from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Dover Townhouse. It's actually the 30th. Is it the 30th or the 30th? I saw the 30th. Is that? Is it April 30th? April 30th. 30th, thank you. I stand corrected. Once again, Carol, thank you for correcting me. <laughs> of April. I can't no, think tonight, but no, you know, my eyes are working. No, the 30th of April. So, um, right here, a motion to execute the special state primary so warrant. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Oh, well, that looked like 13. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll get them on the way back. Okay. Okay, Joe, both of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have two special licenses to review and approve this evening. OK, 
change you notice that we have two uh, special licenses to approve the first is april uh, 6th 2013 at um, elm bank and that's the hardy school and the chief has signed that very good the second is april 27th at elm bank also a winning and the chief has authorized that one uh, <coughs> I'll make the motion to uh, approve both special licenses. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Great, thank you. Okay, our next agenda item is snow and ice authorization. And um, just imagine last year was, I think it was 74 degrees today, oh. and today it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, I commend Mr. Hughes and his crew for doing an excellent job. So, Mr. Ramsey, if you will walk us through this one. Uh, as of this memo, he was down to about uh, thousand dollar balance and, uh, and that was prior to today or including uh, um, estimating today's um, damages so to speak before today's damages okay and I think we saw him when did this come in was did it come in the end of the day yesterday yeah he was kind of hoping <laughs> yeah hoping for the best well tomorrow's spring <laughs> that's right so let's look forward to that okay uh, I'll, I'll make the most so the totals. Uh, we'll get uh, 265, 315. Three, this will bring us up to 365 then. Right? Am I reading that correctly? Uh, three, oh, 465. 465. Right? Oh, original budget plus 175. Right. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well. How times changed from last year to this year. It wasn't that long ago, Mr. Chairman, that Craig and I were talking about maybe we'll return the surplus of snow and ice <laughs> for the second time in memory. Yeah. Not to be. Does anyone have any comments or questions on this snow and ice authorization? Money well spent. It is money well spent, Joe. So I'll make the motion uh, for an additional $50,000 in the snow and ice budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Brad. Uh, our next agenda item is the Childhood Cancer Awareness Week. Dave, can you speak to this quickly? Uh, we have received a request for the Board of Selectmen to issue a proclamation recognizing Childhood Cancer Awareness Week in Dover from April 21st through 27, 2013. Has the proclamation been uh, actually created? It has not. Okay. Well, I can't think of a better cause, quite honestly. So the um, suggested text that's on the bottom of this email. We would put that into a proclamation format. Okay. Concerns? Okay. Joe, any questions on this one? No. Okay. Now, do we vote to have a Childhood Cancer Awareness Week then? Mm -hmm. Okay. I will make the motion that 
the town of Dover uh, recognizes the Childhood Cancer Awareness Week from April 21 through 27th, 2013. Yes, All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Thank you. Uh, next uh, agenda item is approving February 28th and March 11th meeting minutes. the minutes of February 28th as submitted. Second. Joe, you weren't, can Joe vote on this? He was not in attendance then? He can. Can, thank he you. certainly can. Thank mm -hmm. you, Joe. I just want to make sure we're correct on all this. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the next, oh, the, <coughs> we had a um, hastily called meeting on Monday, I believe, March 11th whereby we revised uh, Article 13 for the Regional School Committee for the HVAC system. We had been um, told it was 800,000 and we were informed after the fact that they changed it to 853. So we voted to put that correct amount into warrant Article 13. So that's what this meeting is, was. I move we approve the minutes of March 11th. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, one of my favorite agenda items as we wrap up, citizens' comments. Paul, anything this evening? Great, thank you. Carol, do you have any comments? Joe, any comments? Mm -hmm. With that, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night now. Thank you.